Hey folks, this is Aaron Hummiston. This is going to be my tutorial for Manga Studio EX4. I'm definitely aware that this is older software, but I posted myself inking a panel in the comic band that I work on, and I got a pretty good response from it. I had a lot of people had a lot of questions and asked me what I thought about the software. So I figured what better reason to throw together another tutorial showing you how I ink a page in my comic. And we're gonna go over the tools and we're gonna go over the process. Currently I'm working on issue seven for Band. I've inked all six of the previous episodes using Manga Studio. So I definitely have worked out a process that works for me for this comic. And I figured I could share it with you. And hopefully Hopefully you can get a little something out of this and start working on your own comic. Before I dive into the actual tutorial, I just wanted to show you that I will be using a Wacom Cintiq. That's how I'm going to get the pen pressure. That's how I'm going to get a lot of the drawing technique down. All right, let's get started. So I've opened up Manga Studio. If I'm starting a brand new project, the first thing I want to do is go to File, New Story and it's gonna bring up this template that it's asking you how to set up the pages for your comic. What I did is I actually found a comic that I felt the layout looked really nice and so I went in and grabbed a ruler and I measured how their comic was set up and so I used that as a template for how I set up my comic. So here you can punch in how you want each page set up and it has a little preview that'll give you an idea of what to expect. Let's look at this preview on its own. The outer edges of this show you how big the file is going to be. This little blue box in the middle, this is going to be the outer edges of your panel borders. And then these little crosshairs on the corners are going to show you where your page is going to be cut. If you look at a comic, you'll notice that sometimes the art goes all the way to the edge of the page. How they achieve that is it'll be printed on a bigger sheet of paper, then they'll cut along the edges of the page so that the artwork will go all the way to the edge of that page. Now, uh, your bleed width is that little bit of wiggle room that they're going to cut and it's there to make sure, okay, your artwork will go to the bleed width, but make sure you don't put anything important over there because they're going to cut it off. Your bleed width is sort of how much wiggle room do you want to use for your printer to cut off the edges of your page. And then the rest I feel is pretty much self-explanatory as far as the dimensions. You use them to customize how you want to set up your page. The page settings, this is a little confusing because the first thing I noticed when I first started using this software, they do have a default setup in a manga style so it reads from upper right to lower left and the pages are set up backwards from an American setup now if you want your comic to be set up in a traditional American left to right setup this is how you need to set it up and then you can add however many pages you want in your comic so let's do 12 pages for now you want to set your binding position to left meaning if you're looking at the front cover of your book the binding is going to be on the left side of the book and then you probably probably want your starting page to be the right page, meaning when you first open your book, the first drawing is going to be that first page, which is on the right side of your book. Now your page structures, I'll just show that to you how it's going to look when we do that. So let's start off with single, hit OK. And you can see how your first page here is set up on the right side, right? So once you get past that first page, you're going to have these double page spreads. And so it has each of your page set up as a single separate page, as a separate file. And they're all separated. Now let's close out of that. Now let's try double. Now as you can see, it attached each of those pages into a double page spread. If you want to utilize that double page spread in your book, you want to kind of combine the artwork into both pages if you do that on a lot then you probably want to stick with this double setup but if each page kind of has its own setup and its own uh, set of artwork then you might want to stick with single all right so I have a 12 page comic setup let's go into page one by double clicking it if you use Photoshop this is probably going to be quite familiar to you my setup might be different than yours you have your toolbar and I have my layers it starts you with a default layer to set up. You can just dive right into uh, your pencils or your thumbnails or however you want to get started. I'll change this layer name to pencils. Here are all our tools. Uh, I'll just start off with a pencil tool and we can just start 
drawing right in here. Automatically, the software utilizes the Wacom pressure sensitivity really, really nicely, and I really like their pencil tool. It, it really feels natural. That's one of the reasons why I love this software. They really work well with the Cintiq and with the pressure sensitivity. It really feels natural to me. All right, so let's just scribble down a basic comic. I'm gonna be just really rough with it. Typically, I don't like try and create separate little panels. I'll just draw little lines separating. I'm just making this up as I go along. I'm not really... Now keep in mind, this blue box right here represents the edge of your comic panels. It's really important that you keep that in mind. And when you start sketching out your comic panels that you don't draw anything important out in this area. You can extend into it, like I want to draw some buildings. Just keep in mind that the panel is going to end there. This would probably be a thumbnail pass. It's gonna work for what I need. You can draw this in Manga Studio, or you could draw it traditionally, or you could use any sort of software you want because you can import a lot of different image files as well. Just go to File, Import. It'll bring up all these different types of files you can import. For issue seven that I'm working on right now, I used the software on my tablet called Clover Paint to draw all my pencils for the comic. I just imported those right into Manga Studio and then I started doing my inking in Manga Studio. For me, once my pencils are done, the next step I do is I start building the actual panels in the page. This is probably one of the coolest things that this software does. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new layer. Now there's this new layer button in your layers menu. And now we have a dialog box that's asking you what kind of layer you want to create. What we want to do is go to layer type and go down to panel ruler layer. Click that, click okay. Now it added this panel ruler layer under the rulers section of your layers. And now if you've noticed this blue box inside the page, the borders have gotten a little bit thicker. That's what your panel ruler layer is. Remember I told you that that blue box represents the outer edges of your panels. So really what it did right here, basically it created a giant panel out of that inner box. What we're gonna do is we're gonna split that panel up into individual panels by using the panel ruler cutter. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find the edges I drew on my thumbnail and I'm going to trace over them basically. Once I click and drag, it gives me these lines. As long as I'm holding down, I can move it however I want. If I hold down the shift key, it will snap to a 90 degree angle or a 45 degree angle. So I hold down the shift key, I drag my cut all the way to the edge. You can go outside of that box and now it's created two separate boxes. So now I have two panels where I once had one. Now I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna split this panel in half. You use that panel ruler cutter to create each of your panels. So now I split the whole thing into my individual panels. And once you're happy with the setup, we right click the panel ruler layer and we go to change layer type. Now it pops in this new window called Convert Panel Ruler. How I have mine set up is I go to Generate Panel Folder. You can change it to whatever you want, but let's just change it to Panel now. It's asking you how you want the preview resolution, uh, preview color model, black and white. I always keep it at, at the standard, so you're gonna be previewing all of your images at uh, full resolution, so there's no question on what's happening. And so once we click OK, look at all these panels that have been added to your layers. Each of the panels that we created now have their own folder. Now remember, the default setting for this is a manga setup, so it sets up your panels reading from upper right to lower left. So I have to go back in and rename them. This isn't actually panel one, this is panel two. Just double click and we can change it to two. This is panel three and so on. Once you have the naming convention set up, you can just, just like Photoshop, move your layers around to where everything's in order. And now we have each of the panels set up and the pencils layer is set up beneath all of your panels. So now we can go into each panel. I double click that folder layer and it brings up a new window so we can work on each panel individually. It shows a faded out version of whatever image you have underneath. So you can take this and start inking or since this is a thumbnail, you can do proper pencil. You can add a layer, call it pencil.
pencil and we can start creating the proper pencils for each individual panel. Let's just say that's my pencil for that particular layer. I'll go to the default layer that it added and I always call that white because I'll fill in that base layer with white. So now I can just focus on the image within the panel without really having any of the other panels or the drawing underneath interfering with it. So now let's add some dialogue to this. What we're gonna do is take this text tool right here. Just like if we're in Photoshop, we're just gonna click where we wanna add the text and I'll just add in the text. If you wanna move the text around, make sure you move your cursor to the edge of the dialogue where you see the arrows and the T. That means you can move your text wherever you wish to. Now we wanna actually create a dialogue balloon around that. So that's gonna be over here in your properties, dialogue balloon settings. Uh, here's a button right here that says generate dialogue balloon. Click that. Now we can see the dialogue balloon around the text. We can make it bigger. We can move it around. You can change the shape of it. Once you're happy with the actual balloon, hit OK. You can also generate a dialogue balloon from materials. Manga Studio EX4 came with a whole bunch of materials, which includes different dialogue balloons that you could use. I always just use these circle ellipse balloons, but uh, if you want something different, just click the select dialogue balloon from materials. I have just tons and tons of different kinds of dialogue balloons that you can use. So I just click cloud one, and now we have this cloud balloon that we can again change. And it's all vector based, so you can scale it up or scale it down as much as you like, and it won't affect the quality of the line. So now I'm happy with the balloon around the text, but we need to add the tail pointing to who is saying this bit of dialogue. These little tools up here, you can add a curved tail or you can add a linear tail. I always add a curved tail. So I click that, nothing's happened yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the tail coming from the balloon and it's gonna start off as just a straight line. So we wanna start within the balloon. I'm gonna click and drag. Now there's a line appearing. I'm going to point it towards the kid who's saying the line. Once I release the button, the line starts bending with my cursor. So once I find a curve that I like, I click once more and there you have it. If for whatever reason you're not happy with it, you can still change the curve of the tail by moving the middle node around. You can change the length of it. You can even change the placement of it. Once you're happy with everything, click OK. And there we have our dialogue. Okay, this tutorial ended up being uh, a lot more involved and longer than I expected. So I'm going to be splitting this into three parts. I hope you like what you've seen so far. I hope you found it helpful. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in part two of this tutorial. If you are interested in checking out the band comic that I'm working on, you can find it at our website at band-comic.com. There's a preview section where you can check out the first 12 pages of issue one. And if you like what you see, you can purchase the first four issues or a collection of issues one through four through Indie Planet. If you do decide to buy any of the issues, I thank you for your support. Thank you so much for checking this video out. If you like it, please click that like button. If you have any questions or comments, you are more than welcome to leave them in the comments section below. And it's always appreciated if you share this video with your friends, your colleagues, or anybody you might know who'd be interested in making comics digitally. I'm on Facebook, Tumblr, and DeviantArt if you want to check out my artwork. And if you aren't already, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's always appreciated. All right, folks, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing you all on parts two and three of this tutorial. And until then, I hope you have a good one. Thanks, folks. Bye.